Hi, welcome back to Smoking Cheltenham. Hope you're good. Hope you're well. You might have noticed I had a bit of a haircut there. Yeah, um, that looks slightly less like a hobo now. Just slightly. I, I was even going to iron my shirt, but I, I've got to admit, I don't even know where the iron is. I can't find it. So, there you go. Maybe, maybe if Vassar Vega wins the Arkle, I might even get a new tooth go the whole hog, eh? We'll see. Um, yeah, decorators continued. We've got a bit of copper. Yeah, a bit of copper there. Anyhow, right then, today I thought we'll just, just tidy up a little front mares chase. I've got like a couple uh, kind of like cover bets, if you like, for Cheltenham. I thought we'll do like the anti-post full roundup again. I thought maybe we'll do that once a month around the first, like, first week in every month. So after today, we've got, like, December, January, February. And we're nearly there, aren't we? So, yeah, it's mad when you look at it like that. It soon goes. Um, and we'll just have a, a review of the, a few races over the weekend as well. I'll just chat a little bit about them. Not too many, I just picked out a few there. Um, and we've got some racing coming up, haven't we, this weekend? Like I said last week, this this for me, this is it. This is it's all kicks off this weekend. This is where the jump starts, and don't know where to look. There's yeah, it's just top class horses all over this weekend. Should be good. So yeah, we'll do uh, yeah the Mare's Chase. I do like this Alkina. Right. Yeah. As, so I mentioned before, I were kind of toying with backing both, if you remember, Allegory, Devassi and, and Alka. And I did just have a small bit on Allegory, Devassi at six to one. I just think that's... Like I said before, I think she's going to be the one to beat. That two and a half length defeat by Impervious, I think that sets the bar for the other horses to get to. Uh, I'm hopeful Halka will get us there and over the bar. But yeah, I just thought she's worth getting on side, I think, at sixes. I mean, the way I'm kind of, we're approaching this really, there's all different ways you can play this game. The way I'm sort of going to approach it is just by, yeah, I'm sort of getting one or two horses back for most of the championship races uh, through the season. And then, obviously, closer to time, then we'll start getting into the handicaps and stuff, but that won't be till like maybe a couple of weeks before. So yeah, I just did have a bit on Allegory. But Hulk is the main one there. Um, yeah, I might do things... might introduce like, you know, just for like the anti-post bet, maybe like a point system type thing. So it's like I've had like one point on Allegory and three points on Halka. I might just, you know, yeah, a little idea of how I'm structuring it. Um, so we'll do the points thing today. If you think I'm overcomplicating or something, if you've got a strong view on that anyway, just let me know. But otherwise, just for the anti-post things, I think we'll kind of do a points sort of way of doing it. Yeah, Hulk is so the main one there. Um, a couple of, of points I just forgot to mention. 
yeah, she did go from Cheltenham, but she did go on to Fairy House and just blow out there. But, you know, last run of the season, I'd forgive her that. That's easily forgivable. Just put a line through that. She came a long way in a short space of time. So, like I said, she didn't make a debut. She won a bumper in November for Gordon. So, just like in four months there, she's gone from winning a bumper to running third. Like, an unlucky third in the grade one at Cheltenham so yeah she came a long way in a short space of time the graphs like that and the other thing I forgot to mention yet they were a stable toy in the racing post to Gordon Elliott's last week and he did say she's a right mare and she goes chasing so you know that gives you knowing she's going to go chasing. A, a lot of them in the mares, and obviously if you look from last season, aren't going chasing. So, yeah, we know she's going chasing, so that's, you know. <sighs> Almost they change her mind again. Uh, this, that happens, doesn't it? But yeah, yeah, he did say last week she goes chasing. The other one there, I love this horse, and you know I hate to do this, fact to file, oh, like I said, I hate to back a horse for two races, you're just kind of halving your stake, very, very occasionally I'll make an exception. I mean, obviously, sometimes the closer you get to Charlton, you back the horse for the wrong race, you have to back it for another race, you know, if you still like it for that race. But, yeah. Um, yeah. And funny enough that the horse, the last horse I can remember doing it for from, like, this far out was also, like, we're galloping. So it was also Mullins and it was also splitting between the Turners and the Browns there. Just, I love this horse. I think, like I mentioned before, the fact Will is going chasing with this horse suggests to me he thinks it's Gold Cup class. He was very positive about it in his trainer in the stable tours. I... 2025 Gold Cup winner. You heard it here first. Um, yeah. I mean, as, as it turns out, I did get a few free bets on him for the Browns, so it kind of negates it a little bit, you know, backing him for both. But I just don't want to miss out on this guy. And I would be like, 50-50 which race it goes for I wouldn't like to say um, I mean I backed it for the Browns I was probably on the thinking of his debut last year um, running a two and a half mile bumper and he needed all of that trip that day he's clearly a strong state he's clearly a Gold Cup horse I mean he's not going to have offences to win the Ryanair next season so he's clearly a three miler but it didn't stop him running galloping in the Turners or Sir Deschamps also went the Turners route so Willie can do that and just with him not having a hurdling campaign he might be or inclined to go Turners. So I really wouldn't like to say, I, I doubt Willie could tell you yet. He didn't name check a race for him. But I imagine, I don't know what it's called, what used to be the Moriarty at the DRF. I'd imagine he'll be going for that. 
and then somewhere between there and Cheltenham he'll make his mind up you know um, it could be a bit like a Sir de Champs this you know one race or the other and that could rumble on maybe up to the week before Cheltenham even who knows uh, the other thing to factor in there maybe when you're trying to figure it out is JP's got a very strong hand this year in well both novice divisions I'd say he's buying some you know he's spending some cash here on you know graded graded horses you know top point to pointers and French recruits and he's going to have some Cheltenham um, I think even now JP top owner at Cheltenham it's, it's, it's just a fucking given already like you know um, the future is green and gold <laughs> but yeah he's uh, if you look at the novices he's got in the chasing division this year in the pocket, Corbett's Cross, Iroko, and this fella. Now, okay, this is a bit like fantasy racing. They've all got to get there, and they've all got to get there in good form. But at this stage, I would say, in the pocket would be the Arcalos out of those four. I think Iroko would be the Browns horse. I think Corbett's Cross would be the Turner's horse. You know, some may disagree, that's just my view here. And I'd suggest that might be the way they play it. And they just get Willie a free reign with this fella and he can go for either the Turner's or the Browns with him. Yeah, a lot of water to go under the bridge till we get that far, but that's kind of how we sort of see it at the moment anyway. I mean, we've not seen him jump a fence yet, but do you know just... If you're in the turners, I think he's like a big, strong, galloping type. I think he'd... In the turners, the way I kind of see it is he'd be kind of prominent the whole way there. Then I could see him taking it up, you know, after a circuit and he might just blow the race apart from the front there on in. He could have it shot to pieces, maybe three out, two out, a little like at Alaho. Just... Not from the beginning, like, but I think he'll just gradually crank it up the whole way around. But you can kind of see him doing something similar in the Browns as well. I guess they'd hang on to him a bit longer in the Browns, but yeah, I think yeah. Certainly in the Turners, I think he'd be committing a fair way out there. Make use of that stamina he's got. But anyhow, he's, he's... I'd say this season, me and us Ramblers, our four novice chasers, say, would be Fasal Vega for the Arkle. Mr. Policeman for the Turners. This fella for the Browns. And Affordale for the Four Mile. That's like our four big novice chasers. Yeah, yeah, I know it's not going to turn out like that, isn't it? But they're, they're the four that I like. And I think next to Fasal Vega, this fella's the one I'm most excited to see. First time up. Twenty twenty five Gold Cup. It's 
So yeah, just add like a point on him for the turners anyway. So that gives us a bit of a platform there to build on if that ends up his target. Great then. So this is where we stand now. Supreme, two points, Marizor West, 16 to 1, now 12 to 1. Yeah, I did kind of top up on, back to at 16s, topped up on 12s. It kind of works out just a shade above 14s there. Um, that can get complicated, this, but most of these will be pretty brutal with, to be fair with the prices and stuff like say some of these are backed at big prices but will be quite brutal weight but so yeah we've got two points on him 16s 14s however you like it Arkle six points six points <laughs> Vassal Vega six to one uh, he's 11 to two now Champion Erdl five points Constitutional 11 to eight one to two now Mare's Hurdle, four points, Lozzy Mouth, seven to two, now threes. National Hunt Chase, one point, Affidale Fury, twenties, he's sixteens. Ballymore, two points, Ballyburn, eights, he's now sixes. Browns, two points, Factor File, twenty eights, he's now fourteens. Two points, Stay Away Face, sixteen, still sixteens. So I did get a couple of free bets I've actually only had two points in that race the rest were free but so it will be brutal we'll not count the free bets uh, Champion Chase 5 points El Fabiolo 2-1 to 11-10 to 10 best Turners got 1 point Mr Policeman there 20s still 20s 1 point Factor File 14s you can actually get 16s if you shop around, it's just I can't get on with them. So we'll count it at 14s, but if you like him, if you want to play him, you you might well be able to get 16s there. Uh, Ryanair, one point, Sir Gerhard, 50s. You can get 66s now. He's like the one horse that you can get a bigger price on at the moment. In one place, you can get 66s. Mayor's Novice Erdl, three points, brighter days ahead, 10 to 1, now 8 to 1, top price. Gold Cup, we've got three points, Jerry Colomba, eights, sevens now. One point, faster, slow, 20s, he's 14s best. Mayor's Chase, three points, Alka de Tabert, 25 to 1. Uh, one point, Allegory de Vassi at sixes. Uh, both 25s and 6s still. So in total, that's 43 points. It's actually more like 40, but like I say, we'll not include the free bets there. So 43 points. So kind of doing it like that, it just gives you a level on my sort of confidence, if you like, for each one. There's actually, so say like Fasal Vega, if Fasal Vega wins the Arkle, that's that's the lot paid for. I want it. Um, like Constitutional and El Fabiolo. You see, we got the multiples as well. Got a nice little double on them too as well. But we'll kind of keep them separate. But yeah, if. If them two win with the double I got as well, that would pay for the lot. Um, Alka wins happy days. That's uh, 78 points, isn't it? So. so, yeah, I know this is going to be a personal thing to people. Some of these horses you probably don't like at all. Some of them you probably like more than I like them. So everybody would probably stake it slightly differently. 
there's all sorts of different ways you can play the game. You might like to just, you might like to back five or six for a race and kind of sort of build the book up there. You might like to trade it on Betfair, you, you know, back these horses and then trade them back when they've shortened up and get, get on for free if you like. Um, all sorts of different ways, but like I say, we'll just try and get one or two for each race and see how we go. Some of these, I mean, it all looks brilliant now. This is, in some ways, this is the best bit of the season because these are all winners. Like, you know, <laughs> right now, these are all winners. Uh, and then it starts and then it just slowly starts fucking unraveling, doesn't it, you know. But we'll get a few through, no doubt. And, you know, we'll get some winners there. If you can make a profit doing this, we've done well. I'd say, but it's just a bit fun, isn't it? And yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can make some profit. So doing the points thing there, I think there's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven races. Out uh, of 43 points, 28 has gone on seven races there. And we've got like the champion hurdle. If you look at these races, we've got the champion hurdle, the mayor's hurdle, the champion chase, the mayor's novice hurdle, the gold cup, mayor's chase and the arkle. Them races generally are easier to nail a horse to the targets for mostly say Fassar Vegas still you know so yeah I mean some of these horses have had one and two points on they're more like the novices where they can go in all sorts of different races there a lot harder to get the targets nailed at this stage but you can guarantee I'll get to Cheltenham and some of these that we've maybe got one or two points on, I'll wish I had like 10 points on them, you know. And maybe some of the ones that I've got more on, I'd wish I'd got less, I don't know. But yeah, I always sort of end up in this position where you've got like two points on something at 25s. And on the day he's like seven to two, six to four, I don't know. And it's like, do you go in again or not at that price? It's kind of a nice problem to have, I suppose, but yeah, it's uh, not good fun. So that's kind of that. Yeah, we'll do that again next month. So if you hate the points thing, just tell me and I'll just drop it. But, Right, I'll just look back at a couple of performances at weekend. Uh, well, a few. Florian Porter, he did well, didn't he? Fair play to him. Uh, nice to see. He enjoyed that. Jumped well in the main. Chancy at a few. At the end of the day, he beat Broadway's boy rated 137 to an half length, getting £5. Tough for Tess away. But yeah, it was nice to see that. Um, personally, I still wouldn't really have him on my mind for Charlton, personally. <laughs> Bo walking. If you remember, I gave a bit of mention to this horse. Uh, Paul Lafiz came out and he got battered again, didn't he? Um, but he were a bit keen and he disappointed. I did have a small 
very very small each way bet on this horse and after all the rule fours it worked out about five to two so i've got most of my money back there about three quarters anyway i, I don't <laughs> i've gone through like 50 accounts somewhere in that region now so i, I don't like backing with the bookies i tend to play mostly the day-to-day -day stuff I'll play on Betfair now. I'm just terrified of losing these accounts. I'll just kind of keep them for the anti-post. Um, if I do have a bet with a bookie, like last season, not once did I go over one point on a horse. I mean, God, don't get me on this <laughs> Do you know that I mentioned the galloping back to the 40s for the RSA? Um, back to the 40s, 33s, and 25s were uh, not massive. Like, if you're saying this points thing, maybe five points in total, maybe not even that. Um, this was like a year before. And I had maybe six or seven bets with this particular bookie. All anti-post, all like a full year before Cheltenham. A few multiples in there. Didn't use this bookies all season. Get to the Cheltenham. Half the horses didn't even run in the race. The ones that did lost still restricted me after. Unreal. Fucking unbelievable, you know. I mean, I did the trading thing for a few years. I won't, I won't get right into this, because if you kind of know what I'm talking about, you're probably not interested. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it might go over your head a little. But, you know, I'd maybe have one or two bets through the week and maybe four or five bets at the weekend. And the way I played it, you know, I kind of concentrate. This is what I sort of love, the high-end jumps racing. So, you know, I put my bet on the night before and say I've got a horse there and I think he's, you know, a six to four shot. And someone puts him in at 11 to four. I'd back that horse to win sort of between 500 and 1,000. And then lay it back, generally, pretty close to the off. I'd say sort of five minutes, three minutes, ten minutes. Uh, fairly close to the off, I'd lay it back. I tend to find that's when it dips to its lowest point. If you leave it really, really late, it could get really volatile. But, yeah. Um, and all, then I'd lay it back for the stake. So if I'd had like, you know, 200 on something at 3 to 1, then I'd lay that 200 back at, say, maybe 2 to 1 the day after. And all it is really, you're not doing anything wrong there. It's just your opinion against the trader's opinion. Not no inside information. I'm not, you know, it's just me my opinion versus their opinion and that's the essence of what betting is isn't it you know but no they don't like it do they uh, so yeah like a few years later and 50 accounts or so and yeah just can't really play that game anymore so the accounts i've got i just cling on to these <laughs> just so i can play this anti-post game like you know so yeah sorry gone rambling here aren't we but yeah that's the sort of bet that would get your account signed off I mean you finish four to six but yeah he disappointed anyway he looked a bit keen maybe one to keep an eye on the winner of the race I thought Waterford Whispers he's, he's an horse to keep an eye out for 
Uh, he'd had one run, a promising bumper run last year. Say so Henry's, like I said, they tend to be backwards in these bumpers. They just go for a bit of a day out, a bit of experience. He looks tidy. Uh, he's by Western or at a cave tower of mare. A lot of stamina there in the pedigree. This was two mile maiden. So, yeah. He he looks tidy. I, I'm not saying he's like graded class, but certainly I think it's a JP horse, isn't it? It's going to be interesting in handicaps when he steps up in trip, I'd have thought. Maybe he'll do better than that, I don't know. But yeah, he's, he's looks tidy horse anyway, he's one to keep an eye out for. Another JP horse, this is definitely one to keep an eye out for um, in handicaps, Spillane's Tower. Uh, I remember I said he was an interesting horse, he's still an interesting horse, this fella. On the face of it, he disappointed, he went on favourite, finished fourth, uh, beat, I don't know, maybe ten lengths, something like that. Uh, he stayed on nicely up the hill there, he's, he's a nice looking horse this um, it just a quick read through his form last year he shaped well in a bumper under a, a kind ride he beat imagine oh he got beat ahead by imagine getting five pound that's not bad form uh, he won his maiden well, two mile three at Nace. Then in the spring there, he unseated at the first in a handicap off a marker one, two, six. And dropped two mile, he would beat two and a half length by a horse called Monbeg Park. Monbeg Park is an interesting horse. He amazed me last year. You look at this horse, he's fucking massive. And he's winning two mile handicap hurdles I was just it just amazed me uh, he's surely going to improve this season over fences he's one to look out for but yeah this Spillane's Tower it's a typical JP thing and it? it's three mile handicap chase down the line you know so yeah we'll keep an eye out for him for handicaps in the springtime I think he's a nice horse Aphrodite Fury. Those Ramblers, that's our first one I, I tend to follow out this year. And he didn't disappoint us, did he? Did did well. Um, this were a good match-up, him and Fevry de Champeau. Uh, I think both well-suited by a fence and a stamina test. I, th I think both these horses would stay eight miles, like, you know. Um... Yeah, he, I'd say he's done well over the summer. Um, so I, I wouldn't class myself as a super expert or anything on these things, but he'd look a bit bigger and stronger to me anyway. Um, I thought he looked on the small side last year, but maybe that's just me, I don't know. Um, yeah, he weren't great at the second. He was sticky at a few of his fences, sort of popped them rather than flew them. But he'll learn plenty from that. And, you know, these staying chases, you don't want them to be too extravagant anyway. But yeah, um, I think he'll improve the experience on that score. Tough race first time out, but he's a tough little bugger, this horse, like I've said before. I think he'll be fine. Um, and yeah, he just kind of showed his class there between the last two. Just had that touch more class, didn't he, then? Favre de Champo. Um, it kept on nicely up the hill. I think Noel Mead will give him the chance to be a Browns horse. I think he mentioned Florida Pearl, then on to Leopardstown at Christmas, you know. So we'll go down that route. 
I wouldn't like to underestimate him. But I still think we're probably looking at the four mile or the Irish national. We'll see. But yeah, he's, he's a likeable horse, this. I like him. So that was good. And that's most of that, really. In the waterside, been talked up as a Ballymore horse in some quarters. He'd be getting lapped by a Ballyburn, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. Um, they seem to take all of the straight to get on top there over two and a half. He were keen, weren't he? But my thoughts afterwards, I, I know, I think, I think some mentioned he may be coming back in trip, but. I, I think he might end up in that. I won't be surprised if he skips Charlton and ends up in that. Is it the Great Sefton three mile novice hurdle back at Aintree at the end of the season? That would be my kind of idea where he may end up. But yeah, I think any pretensions to being a Ballymore horse, no. no. Um. Paul Nichols, he had a nice horse yesterday, didn't he, in that bumper, Captain Bellamy. Um, he looks a big strap in three-mile chase of the future. Yeah, it won't be for Charlton this year, but he looks a nice prospect going forward. He's... Uh, off the point-to-point -point list. If you go... On that, the racer's site, go on the Jumps Micro site, there's ex Irish pointers. Each year, the fellow there does a list of 12 horses to follow. I'd suggest they're worth taking note of. He's the first one out this season, and there's been some, you know, Cheltenham winners on that list. There's always some nice types on there. Envoy Allen, he won there. Um, Fernie Ollo, you know, Charlton Bumper winners have come off that list. Um, yeah, I'll just give this a quick mention that, that <laughs> Down Royal says Elliot's playground this weekend, he brings out his nice horses here, and the Bumper on Saturday. I'll just give this a quick mention now because I'm I think I'll do another video just previewing the weekend's action either tomorrow evening or Friday morning I had to split it because I couldn't do this and that in one video it would be like an hour and a half or something so yeah but there's, there's the bumper there on Saturday is introduced Sigur, yeah, Sigur Hard ran in that bumper for him. Ended up winning the bumper for Willie. American Mike won that bumper for him. Ended up coming second to Fasal Vega. So, I mean, the bumper at Cheltenham up to last year, Willie and Gordon had won six on the bounce between them. If we count, Segura so does like half a point each, say. Then Gordon's two and a half and Willie's three and a half there. Um, so, you know, recent history suggests Willie or Gordon will be taking this bumper. And there's a fair chance that Gordon's best bumper horse will be in this bumper on the Saturday. Um so it's not the maddest thing to think about playing his main hope in this bumper on Saturday to have like one point on it say for the bumper sounds mad but it's it's not these creatures 
these trainers are kind of creatures of habit we've seen with um, no meat there that race after Dale Fury won you know he always sends his best novice chaser to that race um, harbour pilot you know he'd, he'd won the last two maybe three out of the last four or five you know um, the race Captain Bellamy won yesterday for Paul I think he'd won three out of the last five stage star had won that bumper so you know they tend to send there's a pattern there like you know they'll send the best horses they'll have a race they like to go to and this is like Gordon's go to race for his bumper horse uh, looking through the list you'd be if his main one turns out to be a Giggins Town one as it did last year I won't be so interested in that because they're not so keen on the bumper at Cheltenham. But looking through the list there, I say some of these, like American Mike, was on that point to point list. Um, I can't remember if Sir Gerhard were. Envoy Allen and Fernie Ollo were both on that point to point list. There's a couple of horses on that point to point list that are entered in this bumper. One of them's a giggy horse, Jersey de Brosses. I think he's more a long term project. The one that could be interesting is a horse called Romeo Coolio. And God, you've got to be so quick with these things. Uh, there's so many clued up people out there. This is been sort of nibbled the last couple of days it's 16s now i mean we don't know if he's even going to run in it yet but i'd say if, if romeo coolio looks his chosen one when you see the decks tomorrow he might be just worth a point just a point like hope you won't go mad on him but yeah so i thought i'd just put that in now because that'll be my next video won't be coming out until after that. And that's it. Yeah. So yeah, we've got some cracking racing coming up this weekend. It's all getting going now. Brave Man's Game, Jerry Colomb, you know, Gold Cup 1, 2, uh, second and third favourite, sorry. We've got Brighter Days Ahead is entered up for Grade 3 at Down Royal. I might be coming a little quick for I'm not sure, but that'd be exciting if she runs there. And yeah, everywhere you look really, there's just... My big genius is entered up, which is good. Um, get a nice pep into him. He's entered up for Three Mile Handicap Chase, the big handicap chase at Ascot there, and... The Colin Parker Memorial at yeah, two and a half, I think, on the Sunday at Carlisle. I'd like to see him in that one. Gets well beat, that's fine, but that'd be a nice spin out, wouldn't it? Um, but yeah, yeah, it should be exciting. Apparently, there's a storm coming. Another one, hopefully. Hopefully, we're okay. Hopefully, we're good, and it's all on. All right. So thanks for watching again. I do appreciate your time. I really do. And I'll see you in the next day or two. Okay. Bye.